Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 5. A major meeting tonight for the 4J School District as the school board weighs whether to continue a contract with Eugene Police. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Mazur. The presence of school resource officers on campus is in focus after the death of George Floyd at the hands of police in Minneapolis. There are growing calls of concern in Oregon to remove school resource officers and divert funding to additional guidance counselors and mental health resources instead. Petitions are circulating both for and against school resource officers online. Board Chair Anne Marie Levis says the board is hearing from both sides of the issue. Now the board meeting starts at 6 o'clock tonight. You can visit the Eugene School District website to tune into the meeting. And of course, we will have the meeting details on NBC 16 News tonight at 11. Portland City Commissioners approve the city budget that will cut $15 million from the Portland Police Department. The move will dissolve the gun violence reduction team, school resource officer program, and the transit division. New positions in the special emergency response team will also be cut, and cannabis taxes will also be pulled. The city will instead redirect nearly $5 million towards the Portland Street response team and programs to support young people in the black community. Well, Senate Republicans unveil their plans for police reform legislation. This comes one day after President Trump signed an executive order on police reform. Here's a breakdown of what the Senate's Justice Act includes. Chokeholds are not banned, but departments will face funding restrictions if they continue the practice. The bill requires police agencies to track data on use of force and share misconduct reports if an officer moves to another department or another police precinct. House Democrats, who previously released their own Justice and Policing Act, say this plan isn't enough. The last thing in the world we need to do is to do something that is symbolic, that has no teeth. The Senate Republicans bill does not include a national database of officer complaints and makes no changes to the qualified immunity that often shields officers from personal liability. Ending that protection and holding officers accountable as a centerpiece of the House bill. The House and Senate are both expected to bring their bills to the floor next week before the July 4th recess. Well, the man accused of hit-and-run incident involving several protesters overnight made an appearance in court. Anthony Eaglehorse Lissandro faces multiple charges, including felony hit-and-run and reckless driving. The incident happened in downtown Portland near Southwest 3rd and Alder just after 1 this morning. Three people were injured and are expected to recover. Police used their air support unit to track Lissandro down in southeast. Well, a 12 year old runaway from Benton County is now possibly in Eugene and police are asking for your help to find him. The Benton County Sheriff's Office says Nick High Roberts ran from a children's care facility in Corvallis on June 7th. Just yesterday, a woman alerted police after she saw a boy fitting Roberts description at Bymart off Royal Avenue in West Eugene. BCSO says Roberts is from Eugene and was traveling with another escape teen who was found in Eugene just last Saturday. We believe it was him, but we can't confirm it. Uh, so we do believe he was in the West Eugene area uh, yesterday afternoon around 1.20 in the afternoon. Captain Rogers says Roberts was last seen wearing dark blue and purple camo pants with a matching short sleeve shirt with an image of a shark's mouth. Roberts is 5'3 with black hair. He has a small faded tattoo on his left hand and a scar on his upper lip. If you have any information, call the Benton County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> Our entire ability to reopen and to stay open is dependent on whether each of us follows basic health and safety protections. Local businesses will only be able to stay open if each of us does our part. Well, finally, some good news for Multnomah County tonight. As Governor Kate Brown says, the county can start phase one this Friday. Marion, Polk and Hood River counties can start phase two on Friday. All other counties have already been in phase two for nearly two weeks already. Meantime, masks or face coverings are now required in indoor public places for those counties we just mentioned, including all Portland Metro counties and Lincoln County. Taking a look at coronavirus numbers statewide, the Oregon Health Authority is reporting 120 new confirmed and presumptive cases and unfortunately three more deaths, totaling up to 183 now. 
The highest number in cases continue up north in Multnomah, Marion, Washington and Clackamas County. Combined, more than 4,300 cases were reported since the pandemic started. You can find the total number of cases reported since the start of the pandemic on your screen now. Lane County Public Health reports a total of 90 cases. 89 are positive cases and one is a presumptive case. Health officials tell us there are seven active cases. Those people are recovering at home. Well, food pantries can now better serve those in need out of their regular locations. It's a step forward as the state continues to reopen in various phases. The food shelf was operating four mobile pantries in Eugene, Springfield, Cottage Grove and Oak Ridge. Since reopening, the nonprofit is now able to close three of their mobile food pantries that were opened on a temporary basis to help families who needed some extra help due to the coronavirus outbreak. Now the need has dropped dramatically. Most likely, anecdotally, that's been contributed or attributed to um, the stimulus checks. People are receiving unemployment. Um, they're getting the federal boost in unemployment. Meantime, the Oak Ridge Pantry remains open until further notice. Food for Lane County relies heavily on financial donations since many of their usual fundraisers were canceled due to the pandemic. They're also accepting non-perishable food items. For more information on donating, visit our website, NBC16.com. Well, tourism leaders in Lane County are taking steps to reboot the industry. They plan to launch a new summer ad campaign and encourage visitors to come to Lane County. Travel Lane County hopes the new commercials will kickstart an industry that's been hit hard by the pandemic. The goal is to encourage staycations in Western Oregon. You know, that oftentimes includes Portland, but right now we're not going to include Portland because they're, they're not even into phase one. So we'll look at some of our other drive markets to kind of extend that invitation to bring people back to the area. Favora says COVID-19 has put 51% of the national hospitality workforce out of a job or on furlough. He adds national estimates show it will take three to four years to make a full recovery. Uh, we know that, but we've done it before, and it's a resilient industry. People like to travel. They like to enjoy other cultures and other places. So we know we'll come back, but it's going to take a while. Fabora says new tourism ads will hit the airwaves around July 1st. Tourism leaders are also pushing Congress to include up to $10 billion in any new stimulus package to help revitalize the industry. Welcome news for the business community tonight as Corvallis joins Eugene with a program allowing businesses to apply for expanded outdoor seating. So this means any business in Corvallis city limits can turn parking spots into extra space for customers through the end of September. This as many local businesses continue to struggle during the pandemic. Any business can apply and if approved by the city, the spots can be turned into drinking, dining or shopping destinations. We're not huge, you know, and when you have to do the social distancing and really cut down on your on your seating, you know, uh, that is such a big help for all of us. We're all excited. Tree Birds is the first business in Corvallis that's approved. They plan to turn their three parking spaces into an outdoor beer garden, opening as soon as this weekend. Exciting stuff there. Neighboring businesses also applied for the program. Now, next at 530, we show you how Tree Birds plans to make the most of their newfound space. Coming up next on NBC 16 at 5, a Georgia district attorney announced charges in the deadly shooting of Richard Brooks. We break down what charges the former officers now face.